Um, okay, uh, morning everyone. Uh, I'm Xiao Chen Zhou, a PhD, a PhD student at UC Riverside. Uh, I'm honored to be the first speaker in this year Linux Security Summit. My talk is about my recent project, Cscope. Uh, the insight of Cscope is that we systematically measured 75% uh, of Linux bugs from Sysbot and find out that a lot of minor bugs like wording or uh, invalid pointer dereference, they can still have critical security impact and even lead to kernel compromise. Um, a little bit background knowledge here. Uh, our study focused on Linux kernel. Um, so the most efficient way to find bugs is uh, fuzzing. Fuzzing is the automatic process that tries to discover the software box by giving concrete test cases. The state of father syscaller uh, is the, uh, the, state of, the state of our father for Linux kernel is syscaller. So recently, the continuous fuzzing platform is taking more places of the bug discovering process. For example, uh, Sysbot is the biggest continuous fuzzing platform targeting the Linux kernel. In the past four years, Sysbot had found more than 4,000 valid bugs. 3,000 of them um, had already been fixed, and 1,000 of them is still pending for patch. Uh, the, among the uh, 3,000 fixed bugs, the biggest portion is uh, the memory bug, including KSUM bugs or KMSUM bugs. There are like around uh, 1,000 of them. Uh, th the next biggest portion is a wording and info bug, so it reports some minor issues in the kernel. Uh, it's around 900 of them. And the third portion is the general protection fault and some invalid pointer dereference. It's around 500. Um, <coughs> so in some sense, the general protection fault and some invalid pointer dereference, it, it might also belong to the memory bug, but uh, here we just separate them from the general memory uh, bugs, like uh, used after free or auto bomb, we separate them. Um, so the kernel box can be simply categorized into sanitizers or kernel assertion. Uh, sanitizers seem to catch several specific type of bugs like uh, use after free or auto bound or double free. So we have uh, kernel address sanitizers. Uh, the title showing on Cspot, uh, uh, it's like ksum, uh, use after free read in some function. We also have uh, ksum captured the uh, data race bugs and uh, KMSUM captured the uninitialized use or uh, uh, UBSUM uh, um, defined behavior. Uh, besides the uh, kernel uh, sanitizers, the kernel assertion uh, is some sort of code that embedded in different kernel places to capture some abnormal behavior. For example, if a variable uh, shouldn't be less than zero, so the developer can put a check to see if the variable is less than zero, then we can throw a warning um, this is the mainly A type of bugs. Uh, they occupy like around 75% of bugs uh, from this spot. Oh, so the, um, there is another strange category just called bug. This bug co uh, contains a lot of like small type of bug, like um, unable handle kernel page or sleeping function or um, list entry not found. So. Yeah, it's just contain a lot of small type of bugs. And general protection fault is usually happen when you're accessing the uh, user space memory uh, from kernel or you write to a read-only data, it will trigger general protection fault. Um, now let's take a look at the security impact of each type of uh, bug. Uh, memory write bug has severe security impact in terms of compromising the kernel. For example, by overwriting the UID, GID, attacker can achieve the local privilege escalation. Uh, or if one can overwrite the function pointer, uh, he or she can, uh, might hijack the control flow, which is also considered as a top risky uh, exploitable capability. Therefore, we think it's fair enough to claim that the memory write bug are uh, uh, high risk bugs. Um, An invalid free is another critical impact that may compromise the kernel. So if the object of freeing uh, is controlled 
is controllable by the attacker, it can be easily converted to a user after free. Uh, so you can allocate the object between, uh, in between the, uh, the two free. So uh, it's also high risk. Other than that, we have uh, memory read bugs. The memory read bugs can leak kernel information like KSAR offset or other kernel address. Uh, it's useful sometimes, but they are not mandatory in kernel exploit. We also have some non-security bug, like wording, info, general protection fault, and uh, bug. They were uh, non-security bugs. So, uh, so we think the memory read, the wording, the info, the general protection fault, and the bug, they were uh, low-risk bugs, uh, which means by using their capabilities uh, relate to their bug type, like read, like uh, invalid pointer dereference, we don't think they are strong enough to compromise the kernel. So we think they are low risk bug. Um, let's talk about the motivation of our project. The first is there are too many bugs to fix. Sysbot continues, uh, continuously report two or three bugs every day, but sometimes it took us weeks or uh, even months to fix one. Besides the reason of the bug uh, complexity, we also find there is a prioritization of risk level in bug fixing uh, process. For example, more uh, serious bugs like zero day will be fixed as soon as possible. Um, from the delay between bug found day and the first patch attempt day, we find memory write bug to, took relative less day than the memory read bug to fix uh, or other long security bugs. Um, so therefore, we believe help people correctly understand the severity of a bug is necessary and important. Imagine a wording bug that can compromise a kernel, but some, uh, somehow people mislabeled its severity and didn't patch it for a long time. The consequences could be terrible if a bad guy managed to exploit it. The next motivation is there's too many patch to port. The main line is the upstream kernel, and the downstream kernel like uh, Android, Ubuntu, Fedora, they will fork a long-term su uh, support version and create their own distributions. Usually the patches that were applied to the downtime support version will also apply to their corresponding distributions. Sometimes the distributions like Ubuntu may also cherry pick patches uh, from the up upstream kernel directly. However, the patch propagation is slow and inefficient. The maintainer may not know which patch are urgent and uh, which one are un unnecessary. For example, the uh, CVE 2019-2215, it was initially reported by Cspot as UF read and fixed in Linux upstream uh, in 52 days. Unfortunately, it took over a year for the patch to propagate to the downstream Android kernel. Uh, because of lack of the knowledge on its security impact. In fact, it's only uh, until a bad actor were caught exploit this vulnerability in the wild, then Google start realize its uh, severity and obtain a CVE number. The reason is that the maintainer do not know uh, do, uh, do not know the correct security impact of a bug. So we will see if a bug clearly shows a more critical impact, like uh, auto bound write the patch will propagate to their distribution sooner than a bug does not show its security impact like wording. So um, therefore, because of misunderstanding the severity of a potential high-risk bug, a downstream kernel may remain unpatched for quite a long time or even forever. Um, so what is the specific problem Cisco want to solve? We prepare three questions. Um, are all seemingly low risk bugs actually low risk? Do bug reports always reveal the uh, real impact of bugs? Interestingly, in our research, the answer turns out to be double no. And can we convert a seemingly low risk bug to high risk bug automatically? Yes, we can convert some low risk bug to high risk bug uh, and even automatically. And the original bug report from Cispa, um or other conventional kernel fathers are uh, sometimes incorrect or uh, misleading. 
The goal of Cscope is to reveal the high risk impact of seemingly low risk bug. And Cscope does not aim to produce the end to end exploit automatically, because this part of job has already been done by the following two works, Kubi and Fuse. They target both uh, out of bound write and use after free bugs. Okay, let's jump to our insights. Um, the first insight is fuzzing ca only catch the first impact of a bug that appears in the execution path. In this case, is the wording here. Even though we can capture another two by just uh, let the fuzzing continue execution, executing without uh, stop. However, the conventional father does not do that because uh, does not do that. Um, they will just you know stop the execution, panic the kernel. Uh, this makes sense because the father only cares of bugs, uh, no matter what bug it is, secure related or not, uh, because all bugs need to be fixed. So the very first uh, impact only. Um, the very first impact is good enough to say, hey, there's a bug, you have to fix it. Um, but this methodology ignores the fact that uh, lack of resource to fix all bugs before they got used by the bad guys. So correctly understanding um, all, bug, all impacts of a bug definitely help us in the bug fixing process. However, the only impact of a bug on this bot is the one showing its bug title or the bug report, like this. It literally showing no impact, like no details. Uh, and it will ignore the following impact behind the warning. Um, so, the, um, the fo so first of all, the, uh, the first bug impact does not always show the most risky impact. Therefore, we may be misled by the bug title and ignore the potential high risk impact that uh, just having a low risk bug title. Another problem is even we let the fuzzing continue without stop, uh, sometimes it still won't catch the following uh, impact behind. For example, the UF read and write here. The reason will be prese uh, presented in the motivating example later. And uh, um, so we knew the UFOB right and the invalid free are high risk bugs. We uh, just talked about it. Now we consider the following three impacts are also high risk. The control flow hijacking, the arbitrary or constrained value right, arbitrary or constrained address right. Uh, however, this three impact cannot be de uh, detected by adding sanitizers or kernel assertions. Therefore, we call them follow up impact. We will talk about the reason why fuzzing cannot detect these three follow-up impact in the motivating example too. Okay, um, so this is a real case from Cisbot, the motivating example, but I simplified the source code. Uh, the root cause of this bug is because CP hash is bigger than the length of therapy perfect array. So when the loop index i is bigger than the length of the therapy perfect array, the EXTS the EXTS here would be out of bound. Um, and because of EXTS is out of bound, oh, is out of bound um, the KSON will capture the out of bound read at 9, 8. So when the EXTS tries to dereference the data pointer action, so it will capture by the KSON and a report to the sysbot as slap out of bound read in the TCF EXTS destroy function. Um, so what if we let the fuzzing continue uh, instead of stop, uh, stop at the first bug uh, impact? Uh, we will enter the function here, uh, TCF action destroy. It looks like we can, we can find an impact <laughs> at 9.16. Um, because of the action comes from the EXTS, which is the out of bound memory. So the action, its value can be arbitrary. Therefore, at 916, we write zero to an arbitrary memory address. Uh, so let's just call it uh, arbitrary address write. So if we let the fuzzing continue instead of stop, can we capture the arbitrary address write later at 916? 
However, it's still unlikely for Fadin to find the arbitrary address right, even we let the execution continue. There is two reasons. The first is at 914. Um, the array pointer actions comes from the out-of-bound memory, so its value is unpredictable. If the pointer, um, so the EXTS is in the out-of-bound memory, and the action comes from out-of-bound memory, so its value is unpredictable. It could be an invalid memory, like, like 40, like, or, a, or, or a valid memory. So if it's an invalid uh, memory address, it will panic the kernel directly. Even though the action is a me uh, valid memory address, as long as the action i is zero, it will still not enter the correct branch, because it's false. It will enter the false branch instead of the true branch. Um, beware the, the action comes from the out-of-bound memory. Fuzzing has no power to control the memory content in the out-of-bound memory. So father cannot determine what value the action um, could be. Um, okay. Um, so the second reason is that even the father is really lucky to satisfy the check at 914. Uh, father capture nothing at 916 if the action i is on a legitimate memory address. So, um, okay, uh, like the action is in the EXTS, and the EXTS, if it point to a legal memory, and we write zero to a legal memory, so everything is normal, nothing happened. The best scenario uh, for the fuzzing is that the, hap the action happened to point to a, to a illegal memory, like, like out-of-bound memory. Okay, then the fuzzing can capture an out of bound write at here. So as long as the action is pointing to a legal memory address, the uh, fuzzing would capture nothing. It will just consider it's just a normal write. So um, eventually, the fuzzing still failed to identify the arbitrary address write at 9.16. But if we are the attacker, is, uh, it's easy for us to bypass the check at 914 because, because the action comes from out of bound memory. We can use heap spring to make it point to a valid memory address and with a long zero value in it to satisfy the check uh, over here. Then we will find the um, arbitrary address right because the heap spring, we can literally control the entire EXTS, which is out of bound, and we will control the action. Therefore, we can put any data here. We will satisfy this check. And if we look further down, we can even find a function pointer. We can look, uh, so we enter the action cleanup function, and the A is, comes from the action I, and the, becomes a P here. And the P dereference uh, oops, and the function pointer clean up. So if we look further down, we can even find the function pointer to reference at 923, which gives us a counter flow hijacking. Um, and of course, by using the heap spring, we can also, uh, we can also control uh, the oops and the cleanup, uh, because they all comes from the action, and the action comes from out of bound memory. But the uh, but so far, all the further impacts, including the arbitrary address, right, and the function pointer dereference, just, they were found by human expert. We want it to be automatically. Um, is there any ultimate solution that achieves the same results? So let's start from the problem itself. The father, the first problem is the father has no power to control the content in the UFOB memory. But a human expert can by the heap spring. Uh, the father, and the father may be blocked by the kernel panic or unsatisfied constraint, uh, for example, the one at 914. Uh, but the human expert won't uh, be blocked because uh, by using heap spring, they, uh, he or she can construct a dedicated action pointer to satisfy this check. So as long as there is a technique that allows program to determine uh, the value in the OB or UF uh, memory, 
it will find a correct one for the action. The technique uh, is the symbolic execution. So symbolic execution is a program analysis, uh, analysis technique that uses symbolic value instead of concrete value during the uh, program execution. So let's skip the technical details of the symbolic execution. Let's just say the symbolic execution can achieve the exact uh, same goal of the hip spring here. We uh, symbolize the uh, entire OB memory, and the symbolic data will propagate to the action and the OPS, and then the cleanup. So if we want, we can solve the symbolic expression, and we will have the concrete value for the entire uh, OB memory, which is the EXTS here. We can have the concrete value for this, for the action, for the OPS, for the cleanup. So basically, we will know v what value to put on this memory will lead us to the function pointer dereference. So for example, the symbolic execution will tell us if we want to enter the, this branch, the true branch, the action, uh, uh, action must be a valid uh, memory address, and the action i must not equal to zero. Otherwise, it will enter the false branch. So the symbolic execution will tell us this knowledge. Um, this is for the motivating example. Let's talk about uh, um, the modes of Syscope. Uh, we have two modes. Um, for the uh, upstream open bugs, Cisco package static analysis and symbolic execution. For the uh, fixed bug, Cisco package fuzzing static analysis and symbolic, symbolic execution. Excuse me. Uh, we will notice that only fixed bugs have the fuzzing process. This is because the fixed bugs have the patch which we can use to uh, eliminate the new bugs because the fuzzing will tell us a bunch of new crash. And w if we don't have the patch, we don't know which, uh, if the new crash is still belongs to the same bug or just a totally new bug. We will talk about the detail later. Uh, the workflow for Cisco is, have three components, the vulnerable, uh, vulnerable context exploration, hidden impact estimation, and uh, exploration validation. They both uh, relate to fuzzing, static analysis, and symbolic execution. But here, we, uh, we won't fit our talk in 40 minutes, so we, um, we ignore the static analysis part because it used to accelerate the symbolic execution. It's not mandatory. So we just keep the fuzzing and the symbolic execution. Um, so the fuzzing will provide, we are trying to fa find more new crash or we can call it a new context. And each new context of the bug will feed to the symbolic execution. So the more context we find, the more chance we, our symbolic execution could convert it to a high-risk bug. Um, we will talk about uh, the fuzzing first. Uh, the main goal of our father is to find more buggy contexts that share the same root causes of the original bug. And we do not uh, stop at the first impact, uh, uh, like the the original, the original bug is the wording, so we do not stop at the wording. We let the father capture multiple impact without stopping. So we may find the uh, UF right uh, behind the wording. And the strategy for our fuzzing is we use original POC. The original POC from C-Spot, we use it as our input test cases and apply a conservative mutating strategy. For example, we do not uh, uh, we do not enable all the system call. We enable like uh, only system call in the cor corresponding module, like network or like KVM. Um, so uh, now we have three. Uh, we have we also find two double free. Let's see. We also find two double free crash. Now we will determine if the new crash still belong to the same bug. Um, Okay, um, this is the new context uh, verification part. Now we have two buggy contacts. Uh, we will verify if they, are, uh, if they are not some new bugs. Therefore, we use a patch to eliminate the new impact. We first apply the patch to the vulnerable kernel to make it uh, uh, invulnerable to those uh, original POC. Um, it means the new pack belong, uh, if the POC of the new context, uh, we're trying to rerun it on the invulnerable, 
kernel, if it still triggers a new impact, which means it's a new bug, we will abandon it. So otherwise, if it, uh, nothing been triggered, we consider it still belong to the same bug, but it's a new context. We will uh, keep this context. So this is how we verify the new context. And we will let father capture uh, multiple bug impact along one execution path and pick up the most high risk one. In this case, is a, a UAF right here. And we also have an impact feedback. We consider each new test case that trigger a new bug impact is interesting test case and worth to mutate. So this is based on the code coverage uh, feedback. Please note that code, co uh, code coverage feedback is not all the goal of our father because we want to tr we want to trigger different contexts of the same bug. But the code coverage could uh, sometimes mislead us to some unrelated code region. So we have our impact feedback. Let's talk about the architecture of our symbolic execution. Um, before we do in symbolic execution, we will actually trigger the bug in QEMU. We set a breakpoint at the KSUM report to freeze the kernel. Then we launch the anger and our symbolic execution engine. We symbolize the UAF OOB memory by inspecting the uh, KSUM report. We symbolize them. And we transfer the register's value from QEMU to the anger and dynamically, uh, dynamically pick up the memory content when we need it. Uh, our symbol execution will verify the following uh, five high risk impact. The UFOB write, we will check if the write, the, if the write to address is in the range of the UFOB memory we just got from uh, over here. We, we know the UFOB memory, the, the range of it. So we will check if the write to address is in that range. So uh, it is, it will be the OBUF write. Uh, for the invalid free, we will check if the arguments of the K3 is symbolic value. If it's symbolic value, which means it comes from the UF or the OB memory, which means it's controllable, we will consider it's invalid free. The control flow hijacking, we will check if the call to address is symbolic. Um, the arbitrary constraint value right, we will check the right, right van, the value will be right to this address. So we check the value if it's symbolic and does it have any constraints. If, if it has any constraint, it will be the constraint value right. Otherwise, it will be arbitrary value right. And we have the arbitrary constraint address right. It's the same uh, theory, but we check the right to address if it's symbolic. Okay, now the, uh, the data set of our exp uh, experiment from SysBot, we pick up all the memory read bug and wording info and general protection fault and bug. So they occupied around 75% bugs uh, on SysBot. Um, after deduplicating and rule out the cases without a valid POC or the one don't target on the upstream kernel, we finally got um, uh, around 1,100 valid bugs. We conduct our experiment on uh, such configuration, and we ran three-hour kernel filing and four-hour symbol execution. So this is the overall result. We totally have 147 low-risk bugs have been converted to high-risk bugs. Um, one bug we so one bug uh, one uh, high-risk bug could have multiple impacts. So this column is about how many high-risk bug we found, and the rest are about each uh, high-risk impact. Uh, we discovered one. Uh, we discovered 178 arbitrary address right and 654 arbitrary value right, and the 51 control flow hijacking, eight uh, invalid free. If we consider the control flow hijacking as the most critical, oh sorry. If we consider the control flow hijacking as the most critical impact, we will see that um, not only the UF, uh, not only those two type of bug, but also the general protection fault bug, the wording, the info, they all have chance to have the control flow hijacking. So to verify our finding, I manually pick up three cases with control flow hijacking impact and manage to write exploit it to uh, target the vulnerable kernel. Um, 
So uh, for the, our fuzzing, the fuzzing alone discovered 61 high-risk bugs, which is 53% of high-risk bugs we find, with 167 impacts, which is 5%. And um, all impacts found by fuzzing are uh, only a UFO be right or invalid free. This is because the follow-up impact cannot be detected by fuzzing. And the average number of the impact for fixed section is 27.9 versus the open section is 16.9. Uh, this is because the open box does not go through the fuzzing, so it has less context. And the buggy context in the fixed section is 1.37 uh, 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 context versus the, in the open section is only one context. The simple execution, uh, besides the 61 bugs that can only turn to uh, that can turn to high risk by fuzzing alone, the rest 52 bugs in the fact section they can only turn to high risk by simple execution. And the simple execution discovered 95 percent impact, including all the control flow hijacking, uh, arbitrary uh, value write, arbitrary uh, const constraint value write, arbitrary constraint address write, 95 percent. Then we disclose our finding to the uh, CVE maintainers, which received say, uh, eight CVE assigned, and we noticed that um, some high-risk bugs were ignored by several vendors like uh, Ubuntu, Fedora. Uh, after our CVE assigned, they, uh, they find their kernel uh, vulnerable to such uh, bug, and they applied, it, applied the patch immediately. And, and our paper will appear on Usenix Security 20, uh, 2022. Um, and you can download uh, our paper online if you find any interest. It should be uh, available soon. And uh, thank you for listening. Syscope is now open source as uh, such a GitHub repo. I'm um, ready to answer any questions.